Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're talking about natural ways that you can improve your sleep quality. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get much better than that. So take advantage. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, guys. So the very first thing I want to start with today, talking about how to improve your sleep naturally, is one very important underlying key factor that we really need to bring to the surface. And it is the fact that our metabolism and our sleep are synergistically related to one another. Meaning, if I sleep poorly, there's a good chance that it's gonna directly affect my metabolism. In fact, we know that it affects the metabolism. There's been studies that have shown that after a poor night's sleep, it actually decreases your metabolism by up to 5%. The other thing that's a double-edged sword on that one is that it also causes us to crave and increase more calories by about 5% as well. So we know that sleep is directly linked to metabolic processes. And likewise, if we get a good night's sleep and restful sleep, we will also see that our metabolic rate increases. Hence the fact that people who are overstressed, have poor sleep habits overall, are gaining weight, are depressed, are having low libido, all these done to their side effects are linked because metabolically it's connected in the same way. So our metabolism is linked to sleep in the same way that it's linked to all those other things. And if we really want to get to the root of it, we're going to go ahead and look at fixing the actual metabolism. The more we support our metabolism, the better quality sleep that we'll get as well, the more restful sleep that we'll see as well. So today we're going to be talking about ways that you can naturally support your metabolism nutritionally and in your lifestyle, but also some other things that you can do environmentally to help improve your sleep quality overall. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. The very first thing that we can do to set ourselves up for success is mold our nutritional patterns and habits to support a pro-metabolic way of eating. So what does that actually mean? It means that we have a good balance of protein, carbohydrates, and fats, and good sources of these macronutrients. So if we have an imbalance of macronutrients, it can actually throw off our blood sugar levels and cause us to be in a deficit where our body is running on a secondary source um, namely our stress hormones and a lot of us are kind of stuck in this chronic stress hormone uh, place where we're relying on those stress hormones day in and day out and it's no wonder that we have these crashes through the days and we're feeling those crashes but we're also wired at night can't fall asleep and we're waking up in the middle of the night because we have those high stress hormone levels and we're not eating in a way that is nutritionally supportive so we need good sources of carbohydrates that's a big one we actually need natural sugar sources and if you're afraid of sugar this is something you should rethink really look back into because there's a lot to it and glucose being one of the main things that drives this is something that our body stores in the form of glycogen in our muscles and our liver and now when our liver is either overloaded with toxins or not able to store the amount of glucose that it should be able to in the form of glycogen this is something that actually doesn't allow our bodies to get through the night and sleep. So we end up waking up at, mm, anybody familiar with that 2 to 4 a.m. range? Yeah, so your body's blood sugar levels have dropped, they've tanked, there's not enough glycogen in the liver, and now your body is running on stress hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, and you're awake. So this is a big one. We need to have carbohydrates in our diet. We need to have a good balance 
of nutrition that supports our metabolism in that way. Now, we could go really deep into this one, but I'm not gonna go any further today. We'll talk a little bit more on other factors of nutrition that can also affect this though. Second, we need to be consuming good mineral sources, salt, magnesium, potassium, and calcium. These are all naturally calming to our body. They show our body that we are in a balanced state or a homeostasis where we can actually relax and we're not in a state where we are trying to survive and just get by. So if we have a diet that actually feeds our bodies with those minerals, then we're also supporting our metabolism in that way, especially magnesium and potassium, which are intracellular uh, minerals there. We find them often right in the cell, that intracellular fluid. Those are very supported of the mitochondria and the mitochondria are the powerhouses of our cells which make up and produce the energy for our bodies. So if we are supporting those mitochondria through these minerals in a good way, then we're going to naturally also improve our sleep again. Remember, we've linked metabolism and sleep in this way, and if we support it nutritionally like this, you're gonna notice a big difference overall. Next, still on the nutritional end of things, we need to be eliminating food that are actually anti-metabolic or anti-thyroid. Again, underlying that metabolism is our thyroid. Our T3 supports our, thi our metabolism quite a bit. So these are a list of things that actually can create digestive upset and are anti-metabolic at the same time. Processed foods, polyunsaturated fats, foods that are high in polyunsaturated fats, nuts, seeds, grains, beans and legumes. These are all things that contain anti-nutrients that have anti-metabolic effects when they are broken down in our bodies and are actually slowing our met metabolic rate down and fighting or reversing the effect that we really want of uh, creating that homeostasis in our body. So even though those can be high nutrient dense things, there are anti-nutrients that actually block us from absorbing that a lot of times and then they end up sitting in our gut and our bodies have a hard time breaking that down which if we're always trying to break food down in our gut or trying to absorb and it's just not happening, that can lead to issues with sleep overall, not to mention that it is slowing the metabolism. So once again, those two being linked together, we wanna make sure that we're eating in a way that actually is easy for our bodies to digest and absorb and that it is promoting a high metabolic rate. If our metabolism is firing, we should be able to feel, feed that fire constantly and keep it firing in that way. That is the goal we will need more fuel when the metabolism is firing high. So that is something to truly understand. And again, this is something we could dive into more, not necessarily for today's video though. Let's keep going. All right, the next one is maybe sla slightly nutritional and slightly lifestyle type thing. We wanna be able and we need to decrease our toxic load. So this could be things that are creating an estrogenic reaction in our body. It could be um, alcohol, drugs. It could be carrageenan. It could be soy lecithin. It could be BPA. So all these things that we really know are kind of around us and are in certain foods. Maybe we're not quite paying attention to what foods they're actually in because a lot of times they do pop up in things that we think are okay and we're eating and they're, we look and they're there. But overall decreasing that toxic load. Now here's why. Again, it comes back to our liver. Our liver stores glycogen. Over the nighttime, our liver is designed to help us get through that fasting period with its stored glycogen. If our liver is backed up and overloaded or unable to process and store glycogen because of the fact that we have an extremely high toxic load in our environment around us and inside our body that we've created, we're gonna be waking up between the hours of 2 and 4 a.m. because our body can no longer use that glycogen. It hasn't been stored. 
our liver is overloaded, and now, again, our backup generator adrenals kick in, and our cortisol spikes, and our adrenaline spikes, and now you're awake again. So, making sure that we are cleaning our environment around us and the foods that we're taking in in that way so that we're not taking in a huge toxic load can be very helpful. Next, working on balancing your blood sugar levels can be helpful. Now, a lot of us have some really bad habits where we're fasting for a long period of time. So again, we're relying on that adrenaline and cortisol calling out there. And we're not eating or keeping our insulin levels regulated so we get big drops or we elevate it too high and that can be problematic. So we wanna make sure that we are balancing our blood sugar well with regular little meals throughout the day to keep it firing eating once again in a pro-metabolic manner with a good balance of carbohydrate, protein, and fat, all three macronutrients involved there. If we're doing that and leveling out our blood sugar, making sure it's not dropping low or spiking high, that is going to be helpful as well. So now we've got that help balanced out overall, and that will keep, again, good glycogen stores in our muscle, in our liver, overall, and make sure that we don't suffer the consequences of elevated stress hormones in our body. And while we're on the topic of stress hormones, the last one that I'm gonna mention here as far as general categories of things that we can kind of help and maintain, it would be minimizing our stress load overall. So if you are in a stressful situation, whether that be work overall, whether you're training for something, if it's high intensity level of training, that could be something that's tipping the scale for you overall. Exercise is a stressor and we need to remember that. So our work, exercise, relationships, any of those things that are putting us out of balance with our stress load, we need to work on actually managing those. So bringing our stress back into a balanced level because once again, we're trying to manage those cortisol and adrenaline spikes that our body's seeing and the amount that our body is actually relying on those things. If it is stressed, whether that be a diet, again, exercise, <laughs> your work, whatever it might be, those are all different stressors and they can affect our body negatively in the mineral balance that we talked about. And if we're eating in a way that's not supporting that, that can overall start to begin a pretty negative cascade, not only affecting your sleep, but also things like the weight and you name it, that list that we went down. So that's important as well. If we don't correct these things that we just kind of talked about, then a lot of what I'm just about to say won't really matter at all. <laughs> we need to get to the root of it all and correct those things first, and then we can try some more of the uh, surface level things to help us along the way and encourage us to get into a deeper sleep, which while we're there, let's go ahead and dive into them. Tip number one, consume something sweet and salty one hour to 30 minutes before you go to sleep. The sugar and the salt are naturally going to decrease your stress hormones in your body. So we're already helping ourselves ease into the night by drinking something that is both sweet and salty. So this could be milk and honey with a pinch of salt in it. This could be something like bone broth with some fruit. This could be something like a pulp-free orange juice with a pinch of salt or some collagen in there as well. Those are all gonna be beneficial. You could also do Parmesan cheese with some fruit. So the combination of, once again, sweet, so we're getting the sugar and the salt, is naturally going to decrease our stress hormones in our body overall and can be very beneficial. I've even seen a natural hot cocoa that someone makes as their pre-bed with some salt, so hot cocoa with some salt, good milk, uh, natural cocoa put in it, and uh, a naturally made marshmallow with some gelatin in there. That can actually be a nice cocktail if you have good sources, again, that is key, good sources, um, before you go to bed to help you 
ease into your sleep well. The bone broth, the helpful thing with that is the glycine in it. That can be very helpful to help get to sleep. In the cheese, calcium is very beneficial in um, combating the spikes of parathyroid hormone that we see at nighttime. Parathyroid hormone is a stress hormone, so that's important to understand. It's kind of along the lines of cortisol and adrenaline there. Um, so these are all things that are combating the spike in stress hormones that would normally cause you to go into fight or flight mode and wake up or be awake right before bed. Tip number two, keep a sweet and salty drink next to your bed at night in case you do wake up in the middle of the night. Now, this will help ease you back into sleep. Once again, the sugar and the salt are going to help you counter the effects of the stress hormones that are waking you up, the adrenaline and the cortisol. I recommend personally doing this with orange juice that's pulp free, a pinch of um, Icelandic sea salt in that, and again, you can, you can mix in collagen powder, um, but I would also mix that orange juice with maybe some potassium if you find orange juice still a little bit hard for you to take in. So um, you could do coconut water or uh, aloe water mixed in with that as well. So orange juice, coconut water, or aloe water mixture. Um, usually I do about a little bit over half the orange juice and a smaller amount of either the aloe or the coconut water or both even. And then a few pinches of salt, actually three hearty pinches of salt there. And that can help you fall back to sleep a lot easier. Once again, on the basis of combating those stress hormones through natural things that are going to calm your body. Sugar and salt. Tip number three, I'm sure you've heard this one before, cut your screen time at least one hour before bed, if not two hours if you can do that. You need to get out of that blue light overall. That is such a huge effect and I don't think we realize it until we start getting away from it and seeing how much it can actually prolong us to get to sleep because of that light exposure there. So I would say either cut it two hours before, get yourself some good blue light blockers if you can't do that, if you're someone who has to work pretty much up until the time you go to bed, which again, we need to work on the overall balance of our stress load. But this is something that if it is worst case scenario, get some blue light blockers. If you can though, cut it two hours before, no phone, Get it out of your face, put it off to the side. If it's your alarm, you know, just don't have it there for it's tempting. Uh, get something else that, that won't tempt you as much. Get a, an alarm clock that's old school style, you know, um, rings, you got to hit it off the counter, anything like that. So if you can, get the phone out of there. No TVs in the bedroom, people. Come on, let's be serious. Get that out of there. iPads, you name it. Any of that screen time, cut it two hours before. Tip number four. Take an Epsom salt bath before bed. Uh, now you wanna do this in warm water, making sure it's not too hot, because once again, too hot can spike a stress response, or too cold could sp spike a stress response as well. So we want Epsom salt bath, one for the magnesium in the Epsom salts. This is gonna be a natural relaxant to our bodies once again. So if you're bathing in it right before bedtime, uh, you know, really set the mood, put some light music on, maybe you read a book, maybe you have some, uh, again, your, your cocktail of sweet and salty while you're taking that bath to help you wind down. Um, any combination to really get you into a relaxed state, making sure, you know, you can dim those lights or keep the lights low. Maybe it's by candlelight. Anything like that where we're limiting light exposure and really telling our bodies that we're getting ready for bed, that's gonna be helpful. Tip number five, create a relaxing environment in your room when you're ready to sleep. Uh, so this would be getting the room as dark as you possibly can get it. So I'll actually use a sleep mask because we have external lights, whether that be the uh, fire alarm in our room. You got some blinking light there. You might have lights on speakers in the room, stuff like that. Uh, we have a diaper um, diaper warmer or a diaper wipe warmer that has a very bright light. So that's where 
getting it as dark as possible using a mask if you need, um, you know, blackout shades, whatever it might be. Setting the temperature in the mid 60s, that's where we sleep best, mid 60s. It might seem chilly, but if you're under those covers, that's gonna be a nice, comfortable environment for you to sleep in. Also, external noise, making sure we're blocking that out. So if you have some type of white noise machine, that can be beneficial. Um, something that will actually block out external noises, especially if you're in a city or a loud environment. Um, you might have some natural white noise, and if that's comforting to you, you can go ahead and use that. But um, otherwise, you can use white noise. That can be helpful as well. So really setting the environment and making sure that it is beneficial to sleep. If your bed is lumpy and it's from you know middle school, uh, get yourself a new bed. It's okay. You can do that. They can deliver them right to your door these days, which makes it really easy. Um, so get yourself a, a bed that is comfortable and really set the environment to make sure that it is going to help you fall asleep and stay in a deep sleep once you're there. Tip number five, six, somewhere in there. Caffeine. Make sure we're cutting off caffeine five hours at least before bedtime. Honestly, I recommend that you drink it, you know, around noon time at the latest but if we're getting into those midday hours caffeine has a five hour half-life um, so you know that's the half-life that means that it doesn't fully clear your system for about 10 hours um, and there's nothing wrong with caffeine and drinking it it's actually a a drink that can be very beneficial especially in the form of coffee um, with with a good creamer and a good sugar again but it is going to block our adenosine receptors, making us feel like we're not tired. So that can definitely affect us. It can also cause us to urinate more. So if part of your problem is waking up so much is that you're urinating often, it might be how you're timing your caffeine. And if it's too late into your day, that could still be causing you to urinate and wake up in the form of having to urinate. <laughs> so cut your coffee off at noon, early on in the day, it's probably even best that you just do it morning, maybe around your exercise if you need a little bit, um, but really looking at where your caffeine's coming in and making sure it's not too close to bedtime. Tip number seven. Now, if you're someone who is chronically cold with their hands, feet, and nose, that can be a sign of hypothyroidism. And again, as I mentioned earlier, our thyroid is directly linked to our metabolism. It can be beneficial for someone in this situation to actually go to bed with socks. That will start to naturally externally warm your body and create a more relaxing uh, situation for you. So if you find that you chronically have cold feet or cold hands and a cold nose going to bed, or you just chronically have cold feet, hands and nose, know that first of all, we know your, your metabolism is suffering because your th thyroid is suffering. And second of all, we can help that along at nighttime, making sure that we are creating a com comfortable environment by wearing a pair of socks to bed in, in that situation. Tip number eight, consume extra calcium at night. So if we kind of overload calcium at night, again, we're countering the effects of parathyroid hormone, PTH, which commonly spikes at nighttime. So we minimize that hormone by balancing it out by feeding our bodies calcium. So this can come in the form of a good source of bone broth. You wanna make sure it's a good source of bone broth that's from the large bones of a grass-fed cow. You can do a good source of milk. I prefer as close to raw as possible. So pasteurized in most states is gonna be as good as we can get. But if you can find unhomogenized, pasteurized, unhomogenized milk, that will be your best bet. And if you say, but Jack, I might be lactose intolerant. Now, a lot of times it's been shown that it's not an actual lactose intolerance. It's the idea that the additives in the milk and those extras that are in it are what people are actually allergic to. So it isn't always the case that the milk is the true culprit. So you might, if you find a good source, be able to drink milk if that's the case. And again, you could use that milk and honey elixir there and try that one. The bone broth 
or a good source of cheese prior to bedtime. Those are all gonna provide you a good extra hit of calcium. You could even make your own eggshell supplement. So eggshell calcium is a high form of calcium that you could use if you wanted to make your own. It would also be a cheap supplement. All you gotta do is save your old eggshells if you eat eggs in the morning, boil them or bake them and create a powder out of them. It's a supplement. Tip number nine, journal, meditate, pray right before bed. Clear your mind. Again, if you can manage your stress load, you're going to help yourself overall in the amount of how you're sleeping through the night, the quality of sleep that you get. And, and that is important. We should be able to brain dump, clear our minds, and make sure that we can go to bed and not have to think about things. And I even recommend sometimes keeping that journal next to your bed with that glass of sweet and salty, whatever it might be, so that you can, if you need to, wake up from something, journal it down, get it off your mind again. If it's a busy time, you got a lot on your mind, you're thinking about stuff, write it down, have your drink, and ease your way back into bed in that situation. And last but not least, tip number 10, take morning and evening walks. Exposing yourself to natural sunlight early in the morning and at evening before bed actually helps us reset our circadian rhythm each day. So it's something very simple if you can just get out and walk before or you know right after breakfast and get out and walk right after your dinner, you're going to be doing yourself a huge favor in helping your body set the circadian rhythm. It's important that we pay attention to our rhythms overall. Try not to ignore if you're tired and your body's feeling sleepy, try not to push through that if you can help it, if you don't have to work or if you can go to bed when your body is already starting to feel sleepy, that's what we wanna make sure we're not pushing through because if you push it too long, again, we get that adrenaline and cortisol spike because our body is now running on survival mode because we've pushed it past its comfort zone and we've ignored its original signal to us that we are getting sleepy. So these are all things that can be very helpful and all encompassing in your overall sleep. We wanna make sure, again, that you are hitting the root cause, getting the metabolism firing as much as it can, helping that thyroid out as much as you can through the way that you eat, supporting that overall. These things will come together and then setting up the environment and overall lifestyle to support good, restful, deep sleep. If it's a matter of quantity, you're not getting enough because it, we're all pushed and stretched for time. Uh, I, it's, it's not surprising. We need to take that back some your health is going to be much more important overall and this is something that is directly affecting your overall health, your metabolic rate, if you are not sleeping well and it becomes a vicious cycle that you have a hard time working back out of. So, take this stuff seriously, run with it, use it as a checklist and see how many of these you can actually check off. Catch the low hanging fruit first and then start to work from there. It doesn't all have to happen overnight, but these are things that will change your sleep if you can implement them with consistency overall. All right, and there you guys have it. How to naturally restore deep, restful sleep that's going to help you optimize your daily performance and your athletic performance overall. If you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend. In the 1940s, we were averaging over eight hours of sleep per night. In today's world, we're averaging under seven hours per night. That's a pretty drastic drop and shift there. And it's no wonder that we're seeing the suffering that we are in so many levels 
metabolically, weight gain, depression, those types of things. We are struggling and this is a huge part of it. It directly is affecting that metabolism and vice versa. So we need to make sure that we're helping out as many people as we can with this one. So please share this one. If you guys have any comments or questions, please drop those down below. I do have my uh, favorite magnesium supplement linked down below and I will also have my favorite salt source linked down below um, let me think is there any other one in there casein can also be helpful in this so if you have a casein protein that can also help you sleep at night I did not mention that one in the main video but I do have a link to that down below as well so you can get casein you can get um, the salt that you need a good source of salt um, and you can get some magnesium as well so that you can consume that a little bit more and naturally help relax yourself and counter those stress hormones better so those will all be linked down below in the description if you guys have not already make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. I will see you guys next week.